It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, folks, I've been telling you about health care in the uh, greater Hazleton area and how the Lehigh Valley Hospital, Hazleton Hospital, and the Health Network has, has lifted the bar considerably. Well, I have a great show for you today. Um, three great doctors on the show. Uh, we're going to talk about the topic is integration of breast cancer services, okay? Hey, men, you can get breast cancer, too, so don't think it's only for women, okay? This is, uh, am I correct, Lori? You are. Yeah, 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 correct. Uh, my guest today, uh, Dr. Michael Evans, he was on the show before, oncologist from the Lehigh Valley Phys Physician Group in Hazleton, and Dr. Harvey Kochner, uh, who is an oncologist from Lehigh Valley Physician Group in Hazleton, and we have a special guest from Lehigh Valley Hospital, Cedarcrest, Dr. Lori Alphonse, okay? Um, this is, I quite... Um, quite interesting, uh, uh, Doctor. You were on the show before, right? Right. How's the family? Doing well. Everything's okay? Yeah, yeah. Right. Just let me know if there's any problems because we'll take care of them. Um, let's talk a little bit about you and then the new oncology services here uh, through Lehigh Valley uh, Physician Group. So I've been here uh, seeing patients mostly since February. And uh, so we're seeing all sorts of cancer patients. Um, just to clarify, when it comes to treating cancer, there's a medical oncologist, which is what I am and what Dr. Dr. Hotchner is. There's also surgical oncologists and uh, radiation oncologists. So uh, we have a medical oncology practice, and we also have a physician's assistant, Tom Lyons, who, uh, who works with us. And so we see you know, the patients who need chemotherapy or other types of systemic therapy, um, generally in conjunction with the other uh, cancer doctors. Now you're talking about difference. So a person goes for a mammogram or they find the lump or whatever, and then who do they go to? So typically once, once there's a, an abnormal mammogram, it needs to be biopsied. And uh, that's something that uh, can be done a number of different ways. I think the ideal way is to have a, a core needle biopsy done, and that's typically done by radiologists. So that's even a, a different group of doctors that helps establish the diagnosis. Okay, so um, you're, when do you come into play? Uh, usually it's a little bit further down, down the line. Uh, the way that things are approached at, at Cedarcrest at, uh, at the uh, flagship hospital, um, they have a multidisciplinary approach to things. And so there's, there's something called a tumor board as well as a multidisciplinary clinic. And, and it's at those occasions when the uh, patient's uh, mammogram and other images will be presented, their pathology specimen will be presented, and all those different doctors are in the room at that point. And then usually a, a uh, so there's a medical oncologist in the room at that point, and, and we remotely um, participate in those conferences down in Allentown. So we're involved that way. But then usually it's after all of the information about the patient's gathered and, and uh, reviewed that the patient then goes on to see the different doctors who they need to be seen by uh, uh, most in their particular situation. Some will need to see a surgeon um, more urgently. Some will, will see a medical oncologist more urgently. Yeah, medical oncologist. Right. Okay. Yep. Now, Dr. Um, um, uh, Hochner, uh tell me a little bit about yourself. I've been in multiple places. Recently joined the practice about two months ago. Um, gen yeah, thank you. Gen uh, trained in, uh, in general medical oncology and hematology. So let me ask you this. Why did you, I mean, because I think the greatest thing that happened in the greater Hazleton area is having Lehigh Valley here. Um, uh, because we have tremendous doctors, we, we really do. Um, why did you decide to come with Lehigh Valley? Well, I think it was an exciting opportunity to start a practice from scratch uh -huh. and get all the, the, the templates and the, and the treatment plans in place and then people can get the hopefully top-notch um, modern treatments. So what do you bring to the plate, Doctor? Um, just experience and knowledge and... And that means so much, doesn't it? Yes. Now, you work with Dr. Evans? Correct. Okay. So in, in <coughs> your... Um, okay, so now, what, are, wh what do you tell women, okay, and I also mentioned about men, okay, that's what, because I know of two of my friends, men who had breast, breast cancer, which was like right. my wife who's a registered nurse, she said, right. it happens, you know. What do you recommend now for, you know, uh, women, what, 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 what should be doing, and when do they start? you know, doing their exams or whatever? Well, exams should be done at any age, but usually above the age of 40, except if there's a, like a family history, it's important. Um, yearly mammograms and self-exams, and of course following up with her, the primary doctor um, if there's any question. Early, in, early intervention is, is curative. Why is it important 
for a person who, uh, who has a family history of breast cancer? Because we've discussed this a couple times where they feel that probably, uh, well, okay, I wait till 40, but their mom, their grandmother, you know, it's a history in the family. When should they be looking at getting exams? Probably starting about the age of 30. Mm -hmm. They should be, unless, unless there's some genetic testing mm -hmm. can be done at an earlier age. To, to, if, if, there's a, if the family member has been detected with genetic disease. What have you found, doctor, in your experiences, you know, in your age? You know, what's the general rule I think of that women in general are very well educated in, in breast cancer. And um, like I said, be, it, it'll be the primary person with the breast cancer that would direct the traffic. If that person is diagnosed with breast cancer or a ge and or genetic abnormality, then hopefully the rest of the family will be informed and they will take the appropriate steps. So <clears throat> a woman goes, she gets a mammogram, you know, or she feels a lump, you know, certainly she's, she panics, okay? Um, let's talk about, you know, what are the advantages and maybe uh, Dr. Um, Alphonse, uh, you're from the Lehigh Valley group, right? True. A, a breast surgeon, right? I am. Okay. Um, wh wh what should be, you know, people get nervous, okay, and you've seen probably tons of them. Um, what's, what are, what are the advantages today that we have that they should feel at least that there's hope out there? Okay. Well, first and foremost, we have better imaging technology. So we can find things better. And when we find them smaller, they are definitely more curable. Um, number two, fear can be a very paralyzing emotion. Lots of times women will feel a lump in their own breast and they won't do anything about it. Most of the time breast cancer doesn't hurt. So they think, well, it doesn't hurt. So I'm going to leave it alone and see what happens. When in fact, truth be told, greater than 80% of palpable breast masses across the board in all women are not cancer, but they shouldn't leave it to themselves to decide that they should come seek an evaluation with a professional to determine what additional imaging and if a biopsy needs to be performed on that mass. As a surgeon, um, BR1, BR2, mm -hmm. explain that. Okay. Um, the two biggest risks that any woman has to begin with across the board for getting breast cancer are having breasts and living long enough to get it. Now that represents about 85% of all breast cancers. They get breast cancer for environmental causes the air they breathed, the water they drank, the food they ate, the stress they were under. And that's why sometimes we see multiple family members that have a history of breast cancer, but don't get tested for that broken BRCA1 gene or broken BRCA2 gene. People that have an inherited mutation and we all sitting all within a 50 mile radius of here, 100 mile radius, have the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene. But our gene might not be broken. It might not have something programmed into it that is going to make a breast cancer form in the future. It may also make an ovarian cancer form in the future. And so women that have multiple family members with a breast cancer diagnosis, women that are diagnosed at a very young age, that gives us a higher um, suspicion for testing them. And it's a blood test. Yes. Not everybody needs it because women that don't meet criteria for getting the blood test are getting a blood test that they're going to get a big bill for and that's not going to mean anything because they still have those remaining two risks of getting breast cancer having breasts and living long enough to get it on the flip side if a woman tests positive for one of those broken genes then we recommend a host of things as subtle as increased imaging they will get an mri every year they will also get a, MR, a, a mammogram every year and we split them every six months They'll get a clinical breast exam, a breast exam from a medical professional every six months. We will recommend something like tamoxifen to reduce their risk of getting breast cancer, and that's done by my medical oncology colleagues. We may recommend um, oral contraception. That reduces their risk of getting ovarian cancer. And then on the other spectrum, we may re recommend for them risk reduction surgery, which may include bilateral mastectomies, and removing their ovaries and their tubes to reduce their risk of ovarian cancer. So we have a plan if somebody is diagnosed with a genetic mutation. Boy, technology is, is, is uh, really increased. In sure years. has. It really sure has. has. Um, uh, my mother was uh, 80 years old, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. she, had, she wanted both removed. 
a couple of years later, she got urine, uh, uterine cancer, mm -hmm. okay, which you were saying. Uh, and thank God she lived until 90 years old. But yeah. I mean, the point is, um, um, it, 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 there, there is a, a tremendous opportunity. And you know, you said something about fear. That is, that's so true, you know, uh, it really is. Of course, I'm the biggest baby when it comes to doctors, okay. But the point is, <laughs> but you know, you have all these things in your, in your mind, you know. Sure. And so I think that's where, you know, doctors have to come into play. And you know, you have to be compassionate, which I'm sure, I, as I, you, you, get, you need to be compassionate, right, Mike? I mean, you, you just, because they're, they're scared, you know, and then, and then they're talking to their friends and, you know, and God knows all that stuff. Okay. How do you comfort them, Dr. Hodgson? How do you comfort them? It is a difficult, I mean, it takes more than one visit yeah. to get that fear out of it yeah, yeah. And, and to have multiple family members present. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really a talking people off the cliff yeah. and it takes, you know, you have to develop a, a rapport with the patients and the families and, yeah. and just test the time that people start understanding once they get out of the, the fear mode and understand now it's time to have a, a, an action plan. From zero to ten, there's, there's, how do you rate hope these days with... Um, the diagnosis, early diagnosis of, of, of uh, breast cancer? Well, I think it's getting better, better and better all the time. Uh, you know, the earlier we get to things, the better the chances are. Um, but I think a, a key point is every patient is an individual and there's going to be aspects of their cancer and their medical health that are going to be very important in understanding where they are, what the best options are going to be for them. But um, we know more and more all the time about how to treat early cancer and advanced uh, breast cancer and, and it's, it's getting better all the time. Folks, I'm talking to doctors, um, uh, Michael Evans, uh, who is an oncologist, the Lehigh Valley Physician Group in Hazleton, also Dr. Harvey Hotchner, uh, oncologist, and Dr. Lori Alphonse from the uh, Cedar Crest uh, Hospital. Uh, phone numbers, folks, uh, very important uh, for any information you want for the Hazleton Group, 570, uh, very easy, 5014LVH, Lehigh Valley Hospital, 5014LVH, and for uh, Dr. Alphonse, 61. 610-402-CARE, C-A-R-E. We'll be back right after this message. Welcome back to the San Sancho, folks. Uh, remember, 24-7, uh, you can watch all of the health shows on ssptv.com. And, of course, my email, sam at ssptv.com. Today, folks, we're talking to the oncology team. And that's what it is, folks, a team. You know, when you go to one doctor, you're actually going to many doctors, okay? Uh, we're talking about the oncology department at Lehigh Valley Hospital, uh, the network, and we have Dr. Michael Evans. He was on the show before, an oncologist, and Dr. Harvey Hotchner uh, from the Lehigh Valley Physician Group in Hazleton. And we're joined by Dr. Lori Alphonse from the um, Lehigh Valley Hospital Cedar Crest. Talk about team. Um, which I think is exciting. But before I get to team, we mentioned about men. Uh, men get breast cancer. So who wants to tell me how a man checks and finds out, doctor? Um, you know, you're, you're right, it does happen. It's, it's certainly not nearly as common as in women. It can be in the circumstances where it's, it's a family that has one of those BRCA mutations. And actually any man um, who has a breast cancer, he should be tested for that mutation. Um, but men do actually have breast tissue, and so if you have breast, breast tissue, it, it can uh, develop into breast cancer. And so there's really, um, you know, not a lot except for, except for vigilance if you, if you feel something abnormal in your breast or, or if you are part of the family, um, a part of an affected family. I, I believe imaging might be indicated. I, I'm not it sure is. about that. Yeah. Most of the time, and I can yeah. kind of add to what Dr. Evans said, most of the time, uh, a palpable mass that a male feels is not cancer. It's a proliferation of their normal breast tissue called gynecomastia, and it can happen for a variety of reasons. Medicines can do it, hormonal changes can do it. It is not a precancerous lesion, and that's palpable and usually painful. However, you need to investigate any palpable mass, and most men will feel it in the shower, and they not need to be fearful of it either. Most guys don't talk about it on the golf course. Hey, I felt a lump in my chest, you know, in my breast, what should I do about it? But they need to know they need to do something about it. And usually we'll get an ultrasound, maybe a mammogram, to determine whether it looks suspicious. Uh, of 100% of breast cancer patients, about 0.4 of them are males. I've cared for male breast cancer. And stage for stage, it's equivalent in terms of its curability when we compare it to female breast cancer. Okay, so when you buy something, they tell you, here's step one, you do this, step two, step three, step four. 
because I'm a simple person, okay? Um, are there steps that women should go through to, to, to do their own, you know, checkup and men to check up, you know, what, you know, do you sit in the shower or, or whatever? You know, you, because as my wife always says, always check your body, you know, especially looking at your husband's back, that's your right. wife's back, if I there's agree. any uh, abnormal mm -hmm. things happening, mm -hmm. uh, that's the nurse in her. Um, so what would be, you know, is there, is there a, a, a step procedure here that you do? I, I know it's simple, but men are men, you know. And we're not the brightest creatures walking the face of the earth. Yeah, I, I mean, I think obviously the, the, anything that is, is obvious should be followed up and, and uh, brought to medical attention, especially if it's, it's there and it's not changing, not going away. Um, otherwise, I think a basic rule is uh, that you, you want to be thorough and you want to be systematic if you are performing a self-exam. So you, you probably want to start around the nipple and, and move in a circular fashion so that you're sure that you're covering uh, the whole uh, breast and, um, you know, doing your best not to miss anything. So Dr. Hotchner, you know, um, when we're talking about this team approach, okay, uh, joining the, the group uh, you said a few months ago, whatever, um, th this is um, a kind of a, a great reward for anyone who comes to Lehigh Valley when it partic particularly comes to any breast oncology, correct? Right. So, I mean, the team approach, I think, is important from our point of view and the patient's point of view. I mean, pa patients <coughs> kind of sometimes test you to make sure that you're communicating among yourselves. So people want to always hear the same story from multiple doctors. Yeah. Um, so if we have a, a, a team approach and we all have to communicate it, then we all say, well, you're going to see the surgeon first, then you're going to see the radiation therapist if you need radiation, and then you'll see us, and then we're going to either give you anti-hormonal therapy or chemotherapy based on the type of tumor you have. So I think it, it serves a lot of purposes. It gives people confidence that we're you know, people are getting the best care and it makes all our jobs easier that we all talk the same language. And that goes with the story about getting a second opinion. Well, you're getting not only a second, a third, and a fourth, and right. a fifth opinion. Right. Okay. I asked Dr. Benio once if he give me a second opinion. He says, and you're ugly too. Right. I didn't think that was nice. <laughs> I didn't think that was nice of him to say that. You know what I mean? I, that Philip guy, he's something else. But the point is, see, that's important. It's important because you have a person uh, who should feel very comfortable, okay, in terms of they're getting a lot of opinions, okay? Um, so when we come to specific surgical expertise in breast surgery, okay, um, when someone looks at it, they're saying, she can't be a breast surgeon, okay, but certainly you're extremely knowledgeable. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Lori. I wanted to ask you that. Because I'm a native of Allentown, Pennsylvania, and I did my training at Hershey. I did my surgical residency in Philadelphia. I did a breast fellowship specializing only in breast surgery, all aspects, including pathology, radiation oncology, medical oncology. All of those things were included, plastic and oncoplastic breast surgery, and then started a breast program from the ground up at one of the Mercy hospitals in Philadelphia. I was there for a little over four years when I had the opportunity to come home. And I'm working at Lehigh Valley about six and a half miles from where I was born and raised. So it's kind of nice to be there. I am the only fellowship trained breast surgeon in the Lehigh Valley Health Network. So I take care of a vast variety of breast <coughs> complaints, but breast is all I see. It's what we call super specialization. Not necessarily super specialization, but when you do one thing all day, every day, you get pretty good at it. And you notice the subtle nuances of somebody who comes in and says, I don't think this is anything. And I look at it and say, oh, it's a little more worrisome than I thought. Likewise, I'm able to take care of a lot of women who come in and say, oh my gosh, I felt this thing, but, but, but. And I say, uh, this is how we're going to work it up. And this is what it is. And it's not anything at all. You certainly have a passion for what you do. I do. Yeah, and, and so why did, you, why did you decide to become a breast surgeon? Um, I have a very significant family history of cancer in my family, which is probably how I got to be a doctor to begin with. Yeah. Um, I'm the only person in my family who went to college, let alone medical school, and let alone anything further than that. Um, on my father's side, my father, my brother, and my nephew all had a rare form of cancer called osteochondrosarcoma. It's Y-linked which means if I had a male child, he'd probably have it, but I'm safe in terms of getting it. It's, it's linked to a genetic P53 mutation. On my mother's side, my mother had breast cancer. She didn't die from it, but she had it and was treated. Uh, her sister died of breast cancer. 
her mother died of breast cancer and her grandmother died of breast cancer. If they would have had technology, I mean, like we have today. Mm -hmm. And yeah. treatment, they were yeah. probably not treated. Yeah. They may have lived a different life. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we don't have know that for sure, mm -hmm. but th they may. We don't know that for sure. And I'll tell you what, Sam, my mom had breast cancer and was successfully treated. She ended up dying from lung cancer. Yeah. And those treatments are, are not as hopeful I as what we have. When it was 80, and then three years later, she, you know, the last, yeah. she, God rest her soul, the, 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 nine years old. When you talk about the breast tumor board, Okay, this is interesting because here again, when you're talking about this whole team approach, it's just it just gets better and better when you're looking at it. The MRIs, the, you know, the the, uh, the mammograms, and then all of the the doctors working together. How does this breast tumor board work, um, Mike? Well, on, on our end, we are up here in Hazleton, and the and the tumor board is run in Allentown. So so for us, we are uh, you know now with modern technology, we're able to link in so that we can see what's being presented uh, to the audience locally in Allentown. We can see that on our on our video screen, and we also have a microphone that we can turn on and off if we want to you know participate in the in the conversation. Um, the, the tumor board is actually run, you could probably speak a little bit more towards how that's run, but generally it's, it's a, a review of the images and the pathology with all those different voices in the room. Does a tumor board get all of them? All yeah. cancer cases. All. We review all cancer cases. It happens every Friday afternoon from noon to one, and they are virtually connected in. They can have their patients participate where we can look at their slides. There are other medical oncologists. There is radiation oncology, radiologists, nutrition, genetics, nursing, a variety of specialists all dedicated to breast care who are there. Then take that one step further, the patients from Hazleton are also allowed to participate in something called a multidisciplinary conference. If we talk about me getting on the phone and calling Dr. Evans or Dr. Hotchner, I want to talk to you about a case that I'm going to be sending to you. That's still multidisciplinary team care, but we offer at Lehigh Valley an actual um, facility after the tumor board where patients and their family members can be seen by myself or my partner, um, a radiation oncologist, a medical oncologist, where we actually sit down and the patient sees all three of us with the same plan for their care. And that has also been very successful. We're actually also looking at ways that we can participate in, in, in that remotely uh, too so that we can be in the room Folks, it just virtually. Gets better and better. If you want to call them, it's fi in Hazleton 501 uh, for LVH, of course, the 570. And if you want to talk to Dr. Alphonse, 610 402 care. Take a short break. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam LaSan Show, folks. My guest today from the oncology department at Lehigh Valley Hospital and Lehigh Valley Cedar Crest. Dr. Michael Evans, Dr. Harvey Hotchner, and Dr. Lori Alphonse. Now, uh, just so people, we let you know, we, we gave you phone numbers, and the phone number's been on the screen. Where, where are you located at, Dr. Right Harvey? now, we're in a temporary location, which we share on the airport beltway called the Desson Center, very close to the Wellness Center. We're gonna be moving about a mile down the street to uh, a new location that they're building for us, and we hope to be in there in uh, August. So when Dr. Hotchner came on board, he says, look, I need a better place. So to build, see, they're building a place for you, Doc. <laughs> see the power you have in this? It's amazing. Um, so you're located with Dr. Yes, Evans, right? And where are you located? I have two offices. I see patients see, at the Cedar Crest office. Two offices. No, and I also <laughs> have one in Bethlehem at our Muhlenberg campus. The first office is where? On Cedar Crest Boulevard. Okay. That's our main hospital, and Muhlenberg, Muhlenberg is our second hospital. And then we have a third um, place where we perform surgery. So we perform surgery at three sites, office hours at two sites. So to get in touch with you at 610. Uh, 402 care. That's okay, get in touch with you, uh, doctors. It's 501 uh, 4 LVH. Okay, so in general, uh, just review for the audience how this oncology team works, uh, Dr. Evans. So we have our local uh, cancer doctors and services up here, and uh, so we're able to do all the chemotherapy in our office. Um, we also have a radiation oncologist who's, who's in the area. Um, but when it comes to resources, being affiliated and integrated with the, uh, the uh, flagship hospital in Allentown really opens up a lot of other resources. And we're, we're learning better and better ways to utilize those remotely and then also by uh, having our patients make so, the trip down. So you then work, um, the both of you work together, right? Correct. You do the same thing? Correct. Okay, so you do certainly, um, as we said, team Evan, you, you know, we're talking about the opinions. And of course, uh, Dr. Alphonse, with you, you're um, a fellowship, the only one you said in, in the- That's right, okay. I'm the only one in our health network and my partners do thyroid surgery, 
pancreatic and liver surgery, sarcoma and melanoma surgery. So we're all cancer specialists. And the important thing that I would want all of our patients here to know is that the best outcomes for cancer care are from a team approach. And that's exactly what they have. I right couldn't here agree in with you more, Doctor. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 as I said, when Lehi Valley came in, and we, you know, since 1994, I've been mean, doing this show, I've been saying, Greater Hazleton area, and I know when we first started, people said, oh, you gotta go out of town. Well, you don't have to go out of town by That's no right. means. We have great doctors in the mm -hmm. entire area, physician assistants, second to none, nurses, aides. You know, we forget about those aides sometimes. They're working in the hospital. Mm -hmm. they're, they're out there working as much. Hey, this is nice meeting you, uh, Dr. Alphonse. And, <laughs> Thank you for and doc having Nice us. meeting you, do doctor. Okay. And of course, nice seeing you again, Dr. Evans. Um, it's the integration of breast cancer services. Nothing like a team approach. Once again, I'll give you the numbers, 501-4LVH. 610-402-CARE uh, for the Lehigh Valley uh, Cedar Crest. Um, and remember, all of our health shows are on the network, are on our website, so you'll see a whole mess of them we have there, folks, ssptv.com. My email, sam at ssptv.com. We'll see you next time.